Hi, I'm Amy and this is A Star Reads. If you're new here, welcome and click that subscribe button so you can learn more about my reviews and nonfiction as this video suggests. <laughs> I'm gonna be doing an August nonfiction review for you. And actually this is something I wanna try and do every month because I read nonfiction anyways. And I've had some requests for nonfiction book suggestions. It's kind of a way for me to review what I've been reading and then also you know, share it with you guys. So I thought this would be a little fun to try once a month. I'll probably give you one book or two or three, depending on what I have for you, and then describe the book and then tell you how I felt about it. And you can then determine whether or not this is a book you want to read going forward. So today I actually have three books, two that I just finished rereading and one that I read back in 2012. And the reason I'm including that one is because I feel like it's appropriate with the subject matter that I'm presenting. And they are all, books that I feel are important in understanding Black American history and why knowing this history is important for understanding the Black Lives Matter movement. The problem our nation has is a problem that affects everyone and it should be important to everyone. The first book I'd like to talk about is The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Age of Colorblindness. And this is by Michelle Alexander. So Michelle Alexander is a lawyer and a civil rights activist. And actually she didn't, she didn't actually start her work in mass incarceration and understanding that as a racial issue. However, through her work, she came to realize that this was the civil rights issue that she needed to address because it wasn't being recognized by the country. There were so many other things that were being talked about, but mass incarceration wasn't one of them. And that was because there's a stigma that goes with the word criminal. There's a stigma that has been placed on people who are criminals, who've become felons, and that actually is a tool, a tool to the success of this program of mass incarceration and the success of control over a population of Americans that have already struggled for hundreds of years. So Michelle Alexander's book starts with a timeline that goes from slavery, reconstruction, she has quite a large section about Jim Crow, and then she discusses civil rights movement a little bit, but then how right after that mass incarceration was the new system that came into place as a form of control over black Americans. So it really started mostly with the war on drugs, which was the interesting thing about that is the war on drugs was really started at a time when drugs weren't the biggest problem in the US, and it kind of sort of came out of nowhere. Once it kind of gained some momentum and gained steam, it took off. And since the initial war on drugs campaign, the number of people incarcerated in our prison systems has increased to an astronomical degree. And not just that, but once you are in the system of mass incarceration, once you've been labeled a felon, once you've been labeled a criminal of some sort, you are still being controlled by the government even once you come out of prison or what have you because you have to be recognized as a felon everywhere you go, including workplaces, including in trying to get jobs. And she really explains how the system has been set up so that it is targeting black Americans specifically. And you can see that by the huge disparity in the number of black Americans that are incarcerated and not just incarcerated, but actually have criminal records. I know there's the argument that these are people that are committing crimes and they're in jail because they've committed crimes. However, she also discusses how lack of resources, a lack of programs, social programs, a lot of these people were really set up for failure. They were set up for extreme levels of poverty and not given the resources that they need to move forward in a lifestyle that is secure and safe and feeling like they had control over food, control over housing, control over these, these different things that were held from them. And she also talks how stereotypes and a certain level of indoctrination in our current policing system has made it so that African Americans are targeted directly and mostly within the justice system. And so what I really liked about this book is that she was able to really go into detail about the areas of control that years and years and years of oppression have forced people into and that they really did not have much of a choice. And when you're not given very many options when it comes to livelihood, you're going to make choices that are putting you at higher risk of being apprehended. She really talks a lot about not only the history of black Americans and also all the injustices they have faced over hundreds of years and why those injustices have led us to the point where they are and why there is so much anger in the black American community now, understandably, 
but also we need to understand our criminal justice system. And this book describes a lot that we didn't know, a lot you don't know about the war on drugs, a lot you don't know about the history of mass incarceration, a lot about world statistics of mass incarceration. We spend so much money in our taxes on a system that is taking away our citizens and putting them in a permanent state of control, not only when they're in prison, but also when they get out because they're so limited. They can't vote. They most time can't find housing. They end up homeless. They turn to drugs because what else do they have really? We haven't given them anything once they come out of jail to help them set themselves up in life. And really we take away hope. And these are our citizens, citizens who cannot get a leg up. That's me on my soapbox. <laughs> and uh, I do think that that is a very difficult book to talk about. I've struggled with how I wanted to talk about this book for a book review because there's no way you can talk about this book and not feel something. It is a very powerful book and it's a very controversial topic. It's a topic that people don't wanna talk about. It's something that needs to be discussed. It needs to be talked about. Our criminal justice system and how it's affecting our nation and our nation's citizens is important to every single one of us. The New Jim Crow, I think everybody should read it. So the next book I'm gonna talk about is The Warmth of Other Suns by Isabel Wilkerson. And if you watched my Tome Top of Vlog, you'll know that I just read this. And this is my second time reading this book as well. I love this book. This is a five star for me. There's nothing that I didn't love about this book. I think the first time I read it, I gave it four stars, but back then I must have been an angrier person because after reading a lot of the books I read back then, I'm giving higher ratings at this point. So Warmth Mother Sons is a discussion about the Great Migration, which is a period during the Jim Crow from about 1917 to, this went in through the 1970s, that black Americans left the South and migrated to the North and to the West. So like New York, Chicago, and other, other large cities in the North, followed by California and some areas over in the West. The incredible thing about Isabel Wilkerson is that she actually interviewed over 1,500 people who participated in or were around during the time of the Great Migration, which I think is incredible legwork. It had to have taken a long time, but imagine all the things she learned with all these oral histories. Her book follows three main people, Ida Mae Gladney, George Swanson Starling, and Robert Pershing Foster. Ida went to Chicago, George went to New York, and Robert went to Los Angeles. They come from fairly different backgrounds. They're also kind of in different class levels, which was a interesting way to look at different perspectives, leaving the South and going somewhere else. This book is a very difficult book to read. There are plenty of trigger warnings because there is graphic detail about the horrible things that went on during Jim Crow. And I feel like all of this was so appropriate and should be read because it's the reality of what people have faced, what families have faced, what children have faced, what everybody had to face in the South during this time. And these people didn't have the luxury of burying their heads in the sand about it. So I thought this book was so well done. There's a little bit of repetition here and there, but I didn't mind that so much because it's such a dense book. She has to bring you back to each person's story occasionally. She gives you a, a nice timeline of their lives, but then interspersed in between her sections where she's talking about their lives, she also talks about other people's experience in the Great Migration around the same time as the story she's relaying. It's a narrative nonfiction, meaning it's really all based on stories. It's an incredible work of oral history. I really like saying that because I feel like we're getting a real voice behind this history. And this is a really important book to read along with The New Jim Crow because this is what leads up to mass incarceration. Because when you see how the Great Migration plays out and what happens once they actually get to the North and West, you realize that all of this is really setting up for the period of mass incarceration. And, and you can understand more than how the new system of racial control has come about. In my opinion, reading these two books back to back was really, really important. It helps explain a lot. And also just as mass incarceration is not discussed much in the sphere of civil rights, the Great Migration is not discussed much in American history. Okay, so the last book I wanna talk about is The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, which may seem a little strange because it's not anything like The Warmth of Other Suns and The New Jim Crow. However, I feel like it's appropriate because even though it's a science nonfiction, the book really goes more into ethics of science, but also the issues of injustices among the black community when it came to science. They were often used as, as sort of guinea pigs 
in medical experimentations and their rights were taken away from them, especially when it came to Henrietta Lacks. She and her family did not have rights to her cells. Although on the surface, it may seem like a book that's more about the scientific culturization of cancerous cells and the legacy that that left the medical industry. It's really a story about racial discrimination. And it's also another really important, but not really well known part of black American history. And that's kind of the theme between these three books. It's history that has affected many people, but has been kind of quiet and insidious. And I feel like these struggles are struggles that have propelled Black Lives Matter because people are tired of injustices. People are tired of being treated as second-class citizens. People are tired of not having the same rights as everybody else. In The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks, it's another narrative nonfiction, and Rebecca Skloot spent many years doing research and interviewing Henrietta Lacks' family and people around her. She tells you the story of Henrietta's life in the South, when she gets cancer, how that's handled by the doctors, and then how her death is handled, then how her cells are handled, and how that becomes a huge factor in the changing of medicine and the way we've handled cancer for many, many years and the legacy that Henrietta leaves. And then her family never even knew about it. So then they talk about her family finding out and not even really understanding what it meant. No one ever, ever discussed it with them. No one ever asked permission to use her cells. I recommend this book. It was great. I gave it four stars back in 2012 and I will probably at some point read it again. Oh, I just thought of something. I'd like to add one more book to this list and although I am currently reading it and I'm only about a quarter of the way through, I feel like it's appropriate because of these books that I was talking about. I'm currently listening to Becoming by Michelle Obama. Why I'm recommending this book also is because once you've read The Warmth of Other Sons, I'd May Gladney, her life is lived mostly in the South Shore of Chicago, which is where Michelle Obama grew up. A lot of the things she discusses sort of parallel the experiences of the younger generation, I'd May Gladney's children and grandchildren. All the people that came from family members that were part of the Great Migration and lived during the Jim Crow era. So far, I can tell that I'm really enjoying Michelle Obama's book, Becoming, and I would recommend it, especially if you're reading these other ones, because I feel like it's a great book to go along with this. And since I'm giving recommendations, I read Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi at the same time as reading these other books. And it was it was fiction and it's fiction fantasy, but I felt like the message in the book was so important to the messages of all these other books. And so I would recommend that book as well. I know that's not nonfiction, but I feel like if you want to do some reading, these are good books to be reading right now. Oh, and since I'm doing this, <laughs> another book that I think is a very appropriate read to read along with these is Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. I read that recently and it was fantastic. I think I gave that one four stars as well. Great, great books. These are great books to be reading right now. Great books to help you understand the importance of the Black Lives Matter movement and why it should be as important to white people as it is to the black people struggling right now and struggling for hundreds of years within our country. So those are my reviews and recommendations. I think these books are so important and I hope that if you read them, you get as much out of them as I did. I feel very strongly that the conversations need to continue beyond this current you know, wave of the movement. And then of course, not just conversations, but actions need to be taken. If you like this video, click the like button and subscribe now so you'll see more of my nonfiction reviews in the future. Thanks for watching, bye.